uh, we have one final presenter, um, and uh, this gentleman came all the way from Marin. Uh, please welcome Mr. Kevin Farnham. He's the CEO of Mira. So while you're setting up, I got to ask a question. I'm not going to count time against you for this one. All right. Um, my question is, I'm from the East Coast, yeah. uh, and uh, there's a word that's spelled M-I-R-R-O-R -R -R that some people would pronounce mirror. I would anyway, but other people would say an accent a different way. So how do you hear your, the name of your company when you, when you hear it in your head? Mira. Mira. Yeah. So is it Boston? I think it's probably Boston. My three-year-old kind of speaks that way too. She's got that thick sort of Boston accent that sometimes toddlers. Cool. <laughs> well, um, Thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, can we start off with something really exciting? I think you have an exciting announcement to make tonight. Can we start with that? Sure. We uh, we launched our AR app uh, just a couple of hours ago. Uh, so that means we launched an iTunes app store that's available as of today. This is the first time you're talking about it publicly, correct? It is. That's really exciting. Continuing the tradition we have of launching apps at the app store on the app at the app show, we think this is going to be a really big one. Thank you. I appreciate you saying so. Um, so, just to sort of by way of introduction, about a year and a half ago, a group of us got together and started thinking a little bit about how do we create some sort of a um, spatial computing engine that will allow anyone, and I mean anyone, uh, to create immersive uh, experiences. And we, we set out to do something that really could truly democratize this because as it stands currently, as many of you know, you know, either having an uh, outsourced team or having an in-house team that needs to be trained, having a lot of people uh, needing to ramp these things up can get very expensive and time consuming. And our goal was to do something where you could create something in a, in a, in a course of a couple of hours, and in some cases, like what you're about to see in a couple of minutes. Um, and so the, the, the system's comprised of environments in which you place things and templates uh, in which you, you can use. Um, and so we, we launch about 10 of these environments a month at this point. And it's a combination of physical environments and abstract and color fields and things of that nature in which you can make these experiences happen. And we'll be working on procedural versions of these in the long run as well, which we're pretty excited about. And we've also made a market. Uh, so we're, we preceded this with 360 assets and with 3D assets and sound files and so forth. But what you're able to do fundamentally is not think about output methods and not think about file formats and all of that. Um, and we're, we're allowing a lot of different kinds of content to come into this. And so that's a combination of uh, different com design components that you're placing on stage. So it's 360 images and videos. Uh, it's text in 590 languages. I didn't even know there were 590 languages before I started this project. Um, there's so 3D models, uh, sound, so directional sound, 3D sound for voiceover, soundtrack, so forth, hotspots, interactivity. Um, there's a, a, a lot that's packed into this thing. Um, How long have you been working on it? About a year and a half. Yeah. And what's your background before Mirror? Uh, I owned a design firm, so I started a design firm called Method about, uh, I guess it's 18 years ago now, and was the CEO of that organization. It's about 100 people between San Francisco, New York, and London. Cool. Yeah, and so videos, all these kinds of things. And so I just want to show you really quickly the editor, um, in, hopefully in the spirit of live demos, this thing is going to go sideways on me. But this is, uh, this is basically, this is a WebGL layer, which we've written a very robust JavaScript layer over the top of, um, and it's talking in real time. So this is all cloud hosted. You can either view things locally, you can share it with your social networks, or you can do something that's fully distributed through the system and, and made public. This is something that I poorly designed in a couple of minutes uh, earlier this afternoon. Um, and it's sort of on a platform, and you can see that I'm going to sort of erase this just to give you a sense. Um, so you'd see, uh, we, we took typography really seriously through this, um, and there's 3D objects, there's 360 orbs in here, um, there's live videos. Um, if I move some of this now and show you an AR, you'll see that it actually did move, and it's all happening in real time. And so the palette on the bottom is really about all of these different kinds of objects that you can use. The library is completely drag and drop, so you pull things from your desktop into here. Uh, we're, we have a large pipeline uh, that makes all of those things happen on the stage. You can do things like change the scene. So in, in this case, I can change the skybox to a number of different formats, uh, different skies, sort of on the fly, um, which is pretty pretty interesting. Um, and so I'm going to actually flip over now that you've seen a little bit of the editor into the AR app and cross my fingers. While you're doing that, just give me a, a show of hands for anybody who wants to ask a question about Mira later so we can come back to you later. Anybody have questions for Mira yet? OK, Paul, take note. There's a mic for these people. Get a chance. All right, here we go. 
So this in, in theory. Let me know when you, so you see something? I do. Okay, I just need to pull and reset here. And they're on, cool, cool. All right, so this is uh, effectively a viewer app in the same way that we've got viewer apps for all of the platforms. Um, it just blacked out. Do you have any thoughts? That's bad. Okay, so here's here's what I created today. There was three of them, but we're not going to have time to go through all three. So I'm, I'm launching that. Uh, and then you're just scanning the environment like you'd expect. Um, and let's see here. So there's three different modes, effectively, um, within the system. There's what we call diorama mode. Um, and there's immersive mode. And um, there's content only mode. So if this is really low into my system, I'm gonna try to rotate and scale this. So this is that same piece. You can see the content's actually in there. Um, and then I'm gonna to move to immersive mode, which is just the content that we created earlier. And this is the app that launched today that you're showing us yeah. right now, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, oops. No, Siri, I don't want you. <laughs> and immersive mode. So here's all of the stuff that you just saw me moving around. A live video of our demo, transparent images, 3D objects, um, the reality app, uh, aug augmented reality app show, and some 3D images that I took when I walked in here of the space that we're in now. So it's just, you know, took this off of a theta. Um, and you weren't here early. On the That's what the, uh, the view looks like. Can we go back to that just for a second? Yeah, sure. Okay. That's a pretty amazing view in this room. Mm -hmm. They're here someplace. So anyone who's been sticking with us the whole time on the live stream can show that I wasn't lying or anything. That's <laughs> yeah. right there. You can okay. turn around up so the room here. There was the bridge. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. I'm sorry. Thank you. And then that, lastly, just sort of like if I don't put my fingers in front of things, this is the content only mode, which we think is going to be pretty interesting for educators and people like that that want to do things sort of in space. So you can see there's transparency. Uh, you can see the room behind that. And all of the content exists one way or another in this. So yeah, that's that. Thanks so much. I think we had one audience with time for one audience question. Anyone really eager to ask a question about Mara before we wrap up for the night? Right to your right. To your right. Uh, where are you guys sourcing your creative content, like your music and your voiceovers and such? We've paid for everything to date. We're going to be opening the APIs to a really broad group of people. It's been the plan from the beginning, whether that's like YouTube or SoundCloud, but also people in the community who want to contribute things, either creative commons, but also through the market. If you want to sell, we're going to allow you to sell and just take a little bit off the top. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the app show and for choosing to launch here.